Hello everyone, Amanda here from scrimpymommy.co.uk and today I'm going to share a lovely card um, with you that I've made for part of my hashtag 100 things. It's a card style that I've been wanting to try for a very long time but for some reason I thought it was super complicated when in actual fact it really isn't. <laughs> so I love this stamp set because it eats so versatile. It is a standalone stamp set, there's no thinlets, there's no punch with it so it's really budget friendly. And you've got four statement stamps there. Really versatile. Thank you. Happy birthday. Have the best day ever. Send in hugs. So all you need really is a little bit of imagination and you can create some awesome cards. So this is the card that I have created using just that one little stamp there. Well, it's not little. It's quite big, but... <laughs> and it is a really fun box card. I have wanted to make one of these forever. And I finally got round to it. I will leave all of the measurements for my card here over on my blog at scrimpingmommy.co.uk. Do click the link in the description box below because that will link you direct to this project. Um, whether you're watching the day that I upload and it's actually the, the day of the blog or whether you're watching in six months time or two years time. If you click the link in the description box it will take you to this project. I have used Cherry Cobbler cardstock and then I've layered it with Whisper White and then Cherry Cobbler DSP as well. You could miss out the Whisper White layering. That's me just wanting to make sure the card's lovely and sturdy in case it goes international. And I also just think it just, just looks a bit nicer. Um, <laughs> so you construct your box card and obviously, you know, it's not a new design. You'll have seen them before. You've got strips inside which you then can attach your stamped images in rows or tiers so that they look like they're floating in air and they're also staggered to give a really cool 3D look. Really lovely. So my first three are stuck just straight onto the strip and then the next two rows are on, a D, on um, acetate strips which I have recycled from packaging but it is the sturdy acetate, not the flimsy stuff. It needs to be able to stand up and not go all bendy and, and floppy. Um, <laughs> you just need to make sure that your, none of your things protrude higher than the card that way or wider than the card when it's folded up so that it does then will fit in a normal card size um, envelope and go through the post. So there you go. So I'm going to show you really, really quickly how to make a card box and then you decorate it how you like. You can copy mine, you can try your own design, whatever you like. Don't forget I will leave everything over on my blog. Don't forget also to click like and subscribe to my channel to make sure you don't miss any further uploads. Right, so let's make the box card. So I have got a standard piece of UK oops UK A4 um, cardstock here this is pumpkin pie it's not my favorite I'm just using it for the sample <laughs> and I'm just going to cut it at four inches I'm not cutting anything off the length I'm just having it like that okay and then we need I'm going to cut a, three pieces to half an inch one, two, three. If you think half an inch is a bit flimsy, cut it wider. But you need them to be four inches, four inches long. Okay, on each one. Four inches long. And then you're going to score each one at either end quarter of an inch, okay? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring my scoreboard in now. So the easiest way, you can score at quarter of an inch down here, but the easiest way for me to do it is to score at three and three quarters of an inch. Turn it round, score at three and three quarters of an inch. And you do the same on all three, okay? I'm just going to show you really quickly. So then we get our four inch, and that's the one I've cut. Yeah, don't want that one. <laughs> so this is our four inch by the full length of A4. Okay, 
So what we want to do now is do some scoring and we're going to score at, on the long side, two inches, let me get my smaller, two inches, five and a half inches, seven and a half and eleven. Okay, if I get my pen and re-go over those, so if I tell you again, we've got two, We've got five and a half, we have seven and a half, and then we have 11. And then you're going to turn it onto the short side, and we're going to score at two, but we're not scoring this panel here, because that is the back panel, we want that to stay rigid. So I'm going to score at two inches, down to the first score line. So if I use my pen again to accentuate it, so you can see. Okay, I've done that. And then just to make it easier, I'm going to turn the full length of the card. So this is where we've just scored, is down here. This is now our, to our top. So we're going from the two inch mark again down to here. So again, we're missing this panel out. We're not scoring it. Okay, so two inches, I'll need that one. Two inches all the way down to there and stop. So let me accentuate that with the pen okay we can move that away now so this is what we have hopefully you can see that nicely let me zoom in and we're going to start cutting so the first thing i'm going to cut is this this is going to be the tab so we're cutting it along there and we're cutting upwards and we don't need that section we don't need that section then we're just going to notch the corners because that is going to be the tab that folds around to create our box shape and then I'm just going to turn it that way so that my tab's there and we're going to cut down these lines to the first score line well to the only score line <laughs> excuse me <coughs> Okay. Right here. So then we just need to fold those back, leaving that one uh, rigid, as it were. Fold those back and fold that those score lines in as well. And that is your box shape. Okay. Really simple. So now with the little tab that we made. So you do this as many as or as few as you like. You need at least one, to be honest. <laughs> so if you're doing more than one, you would attach you would attach them in rows. So you'd attach one there, and then you might attach the second one there, further on. Okay, and then if you want a third, further on. So that they are staggered. If you look at mine here. Okay, so that they're staggered, so they're not next to each other, they're, they're in rows behind each other and they need to be level as well. And then what you do is you get some form of adhesive, I would suggest a strong tape to attach these. You might get slightly frustrated if you use wet glue because waiting for it to dry um, can be a bit of a bind. So then you'd attach that there like so, okay, and then when you, um, yeah, when you shut your card like that and attach that, then it will be in the right place, okay. And then just attach your flap, line it up nicely. It should all just fold flat to line up, like so, and you have your basic box card with the rigid part at the back and these parts at the front and the side. So then, you know, as I say, add another strip there, perhaps attach your strips. Um, obviously, it's easier to do it before you close your box up, but it's not impossible to do it after. It's not impossible, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect round the corners off, layer them with DSP and add some lovely stamped images and there you go. And that's what you can get with a little bit of imagination and just the one stamp. 
So give that a try, um, have some fun with it and if you do make one please do share it on social media if you're on facebook make one share it and tag me in it if you're on instagram tag me um tag me by by putting um the at sign and scrimpy mama if you're on facebook tag me my name is amanda charlesworth and then i will get to see what you have made um i hope you'll enjoy that and i ho do hope you'll give it a try thanks for watching and i'll see you again soon bye